Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, a.k.a. Barnacles. Now, what are you supposed to do when a guy named Tyler from a small company called Mayflower Electronics sends you a big email trying to convince you that a little amplifier that him and his brother MacGyver build in the back of a radio shack can compete with a $1,000 headphone amplifier that weighs as much as a cinder block? I'll tell you what you say. Put your money where your mouth is, send it to me, and let me be the judge. Oh, he also modifies headphones, too. So he sent me a pair of his modified version 3 headphones. We'll go ahead and work those in while we're at it. Because, let's be honest, you can never have too many headphones. <laughs> Am I right? Of course I'm right. All right, let's start off by taking a look here at the DAC and the amp. The first of all, the DAC is tiny. Look at this thing. It's got a USB port and a line out and that's it. And the great thing about it is you plug it into the computer. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's OS X or Windows. Even I even tried it on Windows 8.1. You plug it in, it just shows up as ODAC. You've got a sound card and you're done. That's it. There's no drivers to configure and you can crank the bit rate up really high. Not as high as you can on the Fireflies, but well beyond what the human hearing range is. So anything after that is kind of bullshit. And uh, that's another thing Tyler kind of told me, and I did some research, and I tend to agree with him now. So, and then on the bottom, you have the amplifier. Again, that seriously looks like it was made, in, you know, made by a guy who went to Radio Shack and had a really fun weekend. But it's got a gain button, it's got an input from the DAC, an output to your headphones, a power on and off, and a place to plug in your uh, power adapter. And on the back, it's got RCAs too, so you can actually run a separate set of line level RCAs out to your mixer board, like that's what I'm gonna do anyways, to your mixer board or your stereo system and be able to play it from two sources at the same time. So I thought that that was really cool. And here is the power brick. This tiny little thing right here. All, all this, it's, it's 12 volts at 200 milliamps. You're like, how does that compete with the brick that's twice the size of this that's putting out power, right? From, the, from this amplifier itself. So I was like, okay, let's give let's give this a try. When I first got it and I took it out of the box, I, you know, I wasn't super surprised because I already saw the pictures on the website, but I picked it up and I was like, it's so, I mean, it's built solid, guys. These are really solid components. I mean, you could drive a car over this thing, but at the same time, you just look at it and you're like, as far as refinement, if you walked into a store and you saw this sitting next to this and you didn't listen to either one of them, what would you think immediately? You'd be like Kroger, right? That That's Kroger right there. <laughs> and if you don't know what Kroger is, that's just, that's just a really cheap brand. But... Today, I learned that looks are deceiving. And actually, I've learned this over the last week because I've been using this amp extensively, um, both at home and at work, mainly because it's so portable and it's so small, but because when I put it head to head with the WA7 Fireflies, it's actually better. And we'll get to that in just a moment. All right, so here's the headphones. These are headphones that Mayflower Audio modifies. So these are T50RPs uh, by Fostex. And if you do some research online, these are actually one of the most modified headphones out there. People buy these as a platform to just go ape shit and build their own headphones. And uh, Mayflower was no exception to this. So let's go ahead and pop these out of here. Sorry for the horrible packaging. I, I repackaged it before I did the review. I've already had these out and been listening to them. And uh, the first thing that I'll show you here, just looking at them, is these pads on the ears here are like the softest cushion you've ever felt in your life. It's like memory foam or something that's in there. And he adds these. These these aren't these aren't the stock ear cups. They're so soft. I mean, they seriously feel like satin. And then up here, you have these pads added that are also just these really airy, lightweight, very th nice little pads. And what's cool about these is you put them on your head and they are so comfortable. I can tell you right now with absolute honesty, and I've been using these for a week, these are more comfortable than my Sennheiser HD 800s, which I thought were the most comfortable headphones in the world. And I thought when I put them on, they'd make my ears sweat. They don't make my ears sweat at all because they're like semi open back. So you get a little bit of airflow going in there and man, do they pound on the base because he does another modification internally to the circuitry to actually change the equalization of these headphones. Now these aren't a transparent headphone. These, these are not a monitor headphone. These are not what you get if you want to hear exactly what the music was mastered. This is what you get if you want a shitload of bass, the mids kind of mellowed out a little bit and a little bit more treble. These are more of a kind of a warm headphone, if that makes sense. Um, and the sound stage on them is actually remarkably good. And uh, we'll go ahead and compare them to some other headphones here in just a little bit. All right, guys, for this test, we're going to be auditioning with the Fostec T50 RP V3s made by Mayflower Audio, or actually modified by Mayflower Audio. And then we've got my Bear Dynamic MMX 300s, which are a fantastic pair of headphones. And we also have our Bose Triport headphones. I wanted to compare them to other headphones that are relative to their price range. Headphones!
All right, well, I've used this product for over a week. I've listened to the headphones. I've actually taken the DAC and amp to work and plugged them into my work computer. And I've listened to a lot of music from different sources and played a lot of games. And so I decided that it would be more appropriate for me to just show you guys some video of gameplay while I'm listening to the headphones and the amp, rather than just have you watch me headbang while I'm listening to Media Player like what I did with the Woo Fireflies video. So let's just get right down to it, guys. Okay, so was I surprised? absolutely completely blown away and what i mean by that is the objective dac and or the objective 2 amp and the dac combo is less than 300 dollars. i think you can get it for around 260 bucks from his website and the the first thing you notice looking at it is if you put it next to the fireflies amp if you put them side by side you'd be like mm, yeah no way no way is the is the little objective 2 amp going to be a competitor but you'd be wrong so let's just go through some pros and cons of it. Let's just get the cons out of the way. The power cable and all the inputs and outputs are on the front. Makes it a little bit harder to make it look neat on your desk because there's always cables everywhere. So for me, I put that down as definitely being one of the cons. Um, it does look like it was made in someone's garage. I mean, when I go to Fry's Electronics, I see project enclosures that look like these. And, uh, and you just kind of look at it. It definitely looks homemade. It looks like a science project. But at the same time, it is very sturdy and the components seem really good quality, obviously. Uh, and then the volume knob is, is actually smooth, but compared to the Fireflies, the Fireflies has a knob on it. Seriously, it feels like it has like some kind of a liquid oil bearing or something in it. It's, it's phenomenal. Um, and then other than that, and, and this isn't even really a con, but it only goes up to 24 bit at 96,000 Hertz. Uh, which the Fireflies can actually go up to 32 bit, 192,000 Hertz. But after doing a little bit of research and actually listening to them back and forth, I couldn't notice any difference over 48, uh, 48,000 Hertz. As soon as I went over 48,000 Hertz, I tried listening as hard as I could with uncompressed music that was just recorded at crazy frequencies. I honestly couldn't tell the difference guys. I don't know if I have the audio file here or not, but they both sound remarkably good. Now let's get to the pros. This thing runs very cool and never gets warm. The freaking Fireflies amp like has like chimneys on top of it. Like literally those vacuum tubes put out so much heat. The thing could actually heat your room in the wintertime. Um, and then the other huge pro for me was there's 100% inbox driver support. I just plugged it in. Windows detected it. I have a new audio device called uh, an objective or ODAC or something like that. And boom, it just works. Everything's there. You don't have to do anything. No downloading software, no having third-party crap to crash, and it's stable. I haven't had a single audio pro problem in the entire week I've been using this thing. The other thing I like about it is it instantly turns on. You push the power button, boom, you're listening to music. With the WA7 Fireflies, you have to turn it on. It takes 15 to 20 seconds for the tubes to heat up, and then you basically have your volume. Um, now, when I first got it, I didn't think it was that annoying because I would just leave it on. But then after I realized vacuum tubes have a finite amount of time that they can, you know, that they last, they blow out just like light bulbs do, uh, I started turning it off. So I'd come up to the computer, I'd flip it on, and I'd be like, why don't I have audio? And, you know, 15 to 20 seconds might not seem like a long time, but you definitely start to notice it. <laughs> the other huge pro in this one, this is this is the one that just blew my mind completely, was that the Objective 2 amplifier is actually more powerful than the Fireflies amp. If you turn them both up to max volume, uh, and I only had one pair of headphones that could actually handle it, and that was the T50RP headphones that he gave me. Um, if you run the thing up to max volume, we're talking this will make your ears bleed. Be careful the volume is significantly higher on the Objective 2. I was completely blown away. The Objective 2 plugs in with like a little AC adapter. And it's only 200 milliamps. So all I keep hearing is about how the WA7 Fireflies is putting out like a watt of power or something like that. I don't, it, it's some, some crazy spec. It's considered a very powerful amplifier. Yet this little guy definitely put it in its place. So go little Mac. And that's a, that's a Mike Tyson's reference for you guys. Um, the other thing is it's very small. I really like the fact that the components are small. This would be easy to put in your laptop bag or even in your pocket to go somewhere. And you could even plug it in, use it with your iPad or your iPhone. And uh, yeah, just try doing that with the WA7 Fireflies. Not going to happen. You can also get a model of this that has the DAC integrated. And I opted not to do that just because I, I, originally I wanted to test the DAC separately. Um, but Honestly, I'd just get them integrated if I could, and it's I think it's like 260 or 270 bucks to do that, and I think that's a really cool option. Now, since the amp and the DAC are separate, you can actually just take the amp with you to use for things like your iPod and everything. You just take it somewhere, you just plug it in, and you're good to go, and I believe it even has a version that can operate off of a 9-volt battery, so definitely check out the website for that.
Another big win is it uses a standard AC adapter. I know we're beating the AC adapter thing to death, but the nice thing about that is you can run down to Radio Shack, buy another one, plug it in, and you're going again. With the WA7, if you have any problems with the power supply for that thing, you're going back to Woo Audio. That thing is so proprietary. Now, a couple other little considerations are if you require ASIO, I couldn't get the ASIO or ASIO drivers to work with the objective amp. Like there, there just simply weren't any ASIO drivers. There were for the Fireflies. So if ASIO is a big deal for you, then definitely go the WA7 Fireflies are out. But still, I mean, you're going to be paying over $600 more. Ah, oh, crap. Ran out of Battlefield 4 footage. So now here's some Call of Duty ghosts. And uh, I really don't want you guys to have to watch this horrible footage. Oh, my God. Infinity Ward, please fix your damn game. Well, ladies and gentlemen, first and foremost, I'd like to say this is probably one of the harder videos that I've ever had to do because I kept comparing things against each other. And this little guy right here uh, actually, in many cases, sounded better. It had more power. And I found it really hard to believe. I was like, there's no way this could actually compete with a really heavy hitting headphone amplifier that comes with a brick this big as a power supply. Um, sorry, I didn't show you guys the brick in the video. Uh, it's lodged basically behind the desk, intertwined in a nest of wires. So I didn't want to rip it out. But you can go look at a picture on Woo Audio site. The power brick is like literally bigger than the amp itself. Um, but because of that, that's why I use so many different headphones. I played games. I listened to music. I listened to lossless compression music. And just, you know, throughout all of my testing, I can honestly say that this little guy right here from Mayflower Electronics, under 300 bucks, you can actually get it integrated too, where the DAC is actually inside of the amplifier. So it's one box and you can get this for under $300 and it's more powerful, smaller, more compact and sounds better than the Woo Audio. But let's see, there's a butt in there somewhere. God, did I waste a thousand dollars? No, I didn't waste a thousand dollars because... If you're going for aesthetics and you like the way your desk looks, the Woo Audio all the way. If you've got a knob twisting fetish, Woo Audio all the way. And I'll be completely honest, all joking aside, the Woo Audio product is a nice product. It really is. Um, you know, I can't look at it as being a ripoff because it is a genuine tube amplifier. It's a very neutral sounding tube amplifier, which as I understand is kind of hard to, to get at. But the thing I was really surprised at was that the tube amplifier didn't sound different to me. And now I don't have an audiophile ear, folks. I'm just, I'm just a regular user that loves his music. But I tried playing every type of music imaginable from, from classical to rock to dubstep. And honestly, unplugging the headphones from this and plugging it in the amp, other than having to adjust the volume because this has more power than the Woo Audio, they sounded identical throughout the whole range. I mean, the headphones obviously colored the sound and changed them, but they sounded the same, which... Which is awesome, because that means that they're both doing their job. They're amplifying the audio and not screwing around with it, which is what you, exactly what you want from an amplifier. Anyways, guys, I hope this video gave you a nerdgasm. It was a really hard one for me to do. I value your feedback down below. I hope I didn't offend any audiophiles making this video, because I'm kind of a weird niche guy where I have headphones that are 20 bucks and I have headphones that are $1,500. And now I have, you know, this amp here. And uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and hang on to this because I actually really, really like this amp, especially since it works with uh, Razer Surround and it has the inbox driver support and everything. I mean, those those little things mean a lot to me. Uh, but the Fireflies amp, I'm seriously considering taking it off the desk and moving it downstairs onto my nightstand and actually using it as an amplifier for uh, my mobile electronics. Um, I may still keep it up here in the man cave because I do actually love the way it looks, but I can't justify having two amps on the desk that both do the same thing where this one actually puts out a little bit higher volume. And the 32-bit 192 kilohertz stuff, or sorry, 192,000 hertz, uh, I didn't notice any difference, guys. Go, going from 24-bit up to 32-bit, I noticed no difference listening with all my headphones, so... I don't know what to say. Maybe my ears are broken. But guys, if you're just an average Joe that just likes the quality of music, you can't go wrong with the setup. This is actually pretty sweet. And thanks, Tyler, for contacting me. All right, guys. Well, my thoughts on the T50 RP headphones uh, are a little mixed. These are the V3, so these are the modified headphones. I've never actually listened to a stock pair of T50 RPs before. Um, but the thing that I want to note is, first, let's just get the cons out of the way. These are a bass machine. They create so much bass that if you crank up the volume on this, and it does take a lot of power to drive these guys, you can actually keep the volume in the upper end of the spectrum. Um, 
it produces bass that's so deep. It, I mean, it like vibrates your jaw, man. It like moves your face. But unfortunately, that comes at the cost of some of the mid range and the treble. I listened to them for a long time, and you can adjust the equalizer and bring that mid and treble back for the most part. But compared to my other headphones, especially the Barodynamic MMX 300s and the Bose headphones, even though they couldn't touch the bass levels on these, having that mid and having that treble at that same level uh, just felt so much more natural and so much better sounding to me. These sounded a little bit muddy. Uh, but if you're listening to stuff like dubstep and you're listening to rap music, these are freaking phenomenal. They have more bass than the Beats by Dre, which is what I tested them against with my wife. But I even let my wife wear them. Uh, actually, about a half an hour ago, I threw them on her, and I had her do a head-to-head -head comparison just to see if I was full of it. And she felt the same way about them after listening to them. As soon as she took them off, she said that she felt like the bass was really, really good on them, but she just felt like there was something missing in the mid, like in dialogue, like speech and, and singing, high woman's voice. Just, I don't know. There, there's something missing there. But... These are not a studio monitor headphone. The mod is meant to be fun and it's meant to be bassy. So if you're a bass nut, these are the headphones for you. But if you if but if you value mid and treble above everything else, these are not your headphones. But I can say something really positive about these headphones. These are the most comfortable headphones I've ever worn in my life. That includes up against the Sennheiser HD 800s. Something about these pads that he did on the ears and on the top here. When these are on your head, you feel like you're wearing nothing. Even though they're a heavy headphone, they just fit so flawlessly well that I need to find a way to actually modify my Sennheiser and my other phones to have the soft padding on them because it's just freaking amazing. So as far as comfort's concerned, holy crap, folks. These are amazingly comfortable. So if you're a complete bass head and you love uh, comfort as a priority, these are your headphones right here, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys. So I went with the Woo Audio WA7 Firefly. It's a really cool integrated amp and DAC, and I'm really, really excited to use it. And it's a very heavy box, so something in here has got some weight to it. So let's go ahead and crack it open and take a look at what's inside. All right, I'll just take my trusty scissors here. Uh, scissors probably not enough. There we go. A knife. That should do the job. Hmm. Or... Open the box!